In this video, we're going to be taking a look at HTML, specifically HTML5. Now, if you have done a little bit of HTML in the past and you've been working with um, earlier versions of HTML, you'll find that there are a few enhancements, a few differences that, uh, that you can take advantage of in HTML5. We will be trying to be as close to the HTML5 standard as we possibly can in this course. So let's take a look quickly at uh, our what we call a standard boilerplate. You should all have a copy of this um, as part of the, the course materials. We're going to go down the, the list of the various elements and talk a little bit about what each one does. Uh, the boilerplate is meant to be a starting point for your, um, your work uh, in HTML. We'll have a different kind of mode when we get into working with cascading style sheets. But in general, all of the work that you'll be doing, at least in the first half of the course, will be using the boilerplate as a starting point. So let's get started on the various elements. In on line one, we have what's known as the document type declaration, the doc type. And the doc type tells the browser what type of file this is. Um, is this something to be interpreted, or is it something to be shown as is? And, and in, in this particular case, this is saying the document type is HTML, which means that when the browser encounters this page, it immediately knows to interpret this as HTML and not just print it out, print out the code as text as we see it here, but actually interpret it so that when it sees the other elements, it will replace the other elements that are listed with elements that are uh, also on the server and send them to the, the browser as they're needed so that you can see uh, a web page with all the text and the graphics and the links all in uh, looking as they should. Uh, note that the, uh, we always have, um, for all of these kinds of tags, we have uh, a less than and greater than symbol here and closing them. And we also, for this particular statement, we have a, uh, an exclamation mark. And note also that the document type does not specify whether it's HTML5 or not. In previous versions of HTML, there was uh, an extension to the document uh, type declaration which said what flavor of HTML to use as the interpretive language for the page. And in this case, HTML is sufficient to say, yes, this is an HTML5 page. The, the next uh, line has the HTML element. And in this case, we have an attribute called language. And it's in quotes. And it's, uh, this is the code or the short form for English. And note that this, uh, all of these uh, all of these elements, uh, even if they have an attribute, they have a closer at the end. So there's a starting and a closing here. The next element is called the, uh, the head. And this section is interpreted by the browser as information about the document. In other, in other words, it's not going to be shown on the page, but it is uh, information which is useful um, sometimes to um, search engines, sometimes to, uh, to people who are using screen readers who are sight impaired, for example. So this just says this is information about the, uh, about the page that's coming up. The first element in the head is called a meta. 
and meta means about itself. So this is just uh, this is a, a, an element which says, okay, this is giving us more information about this page. And in this case, the attribute is uh, the character set. The character set is UTF-8. There's not too much that I can say about this. This is not something that you're going to change. Though if you were doing web pages in, in other languages other than English, you might choose uh, other character sets. For example, UTF-16 might be used for um, a, uh, a page in um, Chinese. Uh, there are other kinds of character sets that you can use. Well, any language that, that is written probably has a character set that you can define in this in this area. You can also, uh, for Arabic or Hebrew, you can tell it that you want to go from right to left as opposed to the way we read from uh, left to right. The the next element is the title, and the title is uh, the information that gets put at the top of the window in most browsers. And this is also used by search engines as the primary method of determining the page's subject and content. Uh, and this is extremely important that you have a descriptive and correct title for all your pages um, because search engines use this. And, and uh, if, if the title uh, confirms and, and goes along with the information in the body of the page, it can actually increase your search engine rank in, in terms of how Google or Bing or the other uh, search engines um, rank your page when someone does a search for a particular word or idea or subject in your website. Um, other uh, Aspects, uh, other meta, there's a description meta, there's an author, and in this case, uh, I've left it kind of open. You would replace my name with your own name, and you would replace the content in the description to indicate what the content is of your particular of your particular web page and website. There's also here in the, in the head a thing called a link. And this is a link to a style sheet. Now, we don't actually have a style sheet. If you take a look at the actual file inside the folder, there is no um, style sheet here. Uh, in this... Um, in this uh, description, we have the, uh, the name or the, the type of thing we're linking to, which is style sheet. And then we have the link, the hypertext reference. And the link actually says it's inside the CSS folder, and it is called styles.css. And right now, we don't actually have a file or a directory called CSS in the uh, directory uh, of this website. So this would come up as an error, but in this case, um, we can show the page, and the browsers should have no problems with it. You, it wouldn't break the, the actual page. But this is expecting a style sheet to be here. And the reason I put it in is because uh, I'm expecting you to have style sheets in all the pages that you create. At the end of the head, you have a, um, uh, an end head um, tag. So this just kind of encloses the, the head elements. One thing that I didn't mention about Text Wrangler and, and basically all text editors is that uh, it allows you to uh, tab elements. So if I click on uh, title and press the tab key, I can indent 
the various elements. And this would this is very helpful because then I get a, the the sense that okay, all of these items here are part of the the head. And when I close the head, then uh, I don't have any uh, anything else inside the head, and then I can have other elements within the body, for example. So it gives me a sense of hierarchy, and it uh, helps me read the the code better. Um, uh, it's just easier to read if you indent things within other things. Uh, also, uh, let me get back to the um, naming things. In the Macintosh and Windows system, you can have uh, only one name for a file if it says styles and it's all lowercase, and then you try to create another file in the same folder that has a capital uh, S in styles it will not let you do that. It will ask you if, it's, uh, if it wants to um, replace it. On our uh, web server, which uses a, is a Linux system, you can have two separate files that are called styles, one of which has a capital S and the other which has a small s. Those two files can sit side by side in the same directory. And this is confusing because if you are linking to a file called styles, and you're referring to it as all lowercase, but the actual file name is has an uppercase letter in it, the uh, web page won't be able to find it. So in order to keep things from being confusing, we use the principle that all of our file names and our directory names are all lowercase. Finally, we have the main event in the web page, and it's called the body. And inside the body, this is stuff that actually gets displayed on the web page. Uh, and then we have the closing of the HTML. And that's uh, a very, very basic outline of the um, various elements and attributes of a standard boilerplate HTML page.